Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to Top 5 Friday. I know you didn't get one last week. I'm sorry, my data cap ran out. I couldn't upload anything. I'm excited for this list just because I don't have to talk about elevation. I don't have to talk about politics. So here we go. Jumping right into it. These aren't in any specific order. They are just my favorite Stephen King novellas of all time. Whatever. Let's go ahead. First up, we have Big Driver from Full Dark, No Stars. I love this entire collection. I feel it's his best collection since, uh, what is it, Different Seasons. Definitely an amazing story. I loved how dark and brutal it was. I loved everything about the story. Um, some, it, it has one of the most intense scenes um, that I've read as far as rape is concerned. I don't like reading the story, and I haven't watched the, uh, I know that sounds funny, but I'll, you know, it's one of my favorite things, but I don't like reading it. It makes me super uncomfortable. Um, I haven't even watched the, uh, the Lifetime TNT, it, one of those, I can I can never remember, I think it's Lifetime, did a uh, television adaptation of Big Driver, and I, can't, I don't even want to watch it because I'm so uncomfortable when I read the book, I really don't want to see it. Um, I'm one of those, I'm not a huge fan of rape scenes, period. Um, no matter who's getting raped, uh, be it male, female, or otherwise, uh, child, children, and it, I, don't, I don't like reading any of that stuff. Um, but this one was especially disturbing because of the location. It's just everything was so wrong about not, not only the rape, of course the rape is the big one, but it was the location also um, in that old rundown, was it a gas station, diner, I can't even remember. But I just, I, I remember, I remember the character saying over and over in their head, I'm, I'm being raped, you know, kind of like, I can't, and that might not even be in here like that, it might not be in here as much as I remember it, but I just remember the character going, going through her mind and knowing what was going on and how disturbing that was for me, the reader, to read about. Alright, next up, we have, this is going to, there's a lot of people going to disagree with me on this one, the Langoliers from... Four past, yeah, Four Past Midnight Homes called Different Seasons. Um, this collection, I love this collection. I probably shouldn't love it as much as I do, but I love Langoliers. I love the really crappy movie with Bronson Pinchot. Uh, I really liked his portrayal of Tommy, Tommy, whatever his name is. Uh, the Langoliers is one of those wild stories that I wish we got more of from Stephen King. And it's one of the reasons why I like Joe Hill's early stuff so much, because it's just so freaking out there. Uh, it's like uh, Joe Hill's story, Aloft. It is so out there, so beyond the norm. that I mean, it's time travel. It's got time travel. It's got these creatures that eat, you know, time, the past. It's amazing. It's an amazing idea, and I love everything about it. And yes, like I said, especially the, the terrible, <laughs> terrible CGI in the, uh, the television version is amazing. And now we're going to hang out in different seasons for two books. Of course, The Body, amazing. Um, it doesn't get much better than The Body. I mean, it's, it's it, Stephen King's it, without the supernatural aspect. You have this group of friends, and the best parts of this book, just like with Stephen King's it, the best parts of this book are just the interaction between the kids. It's great. I love the time frame. I love the movie, too. Um, even though, a li little bit of trivia for you, the movie happens in Castle Rock, uh, Oregon. Or, yeah, Castle Rock, Oregon. And then the, of course, the book happens in Castle Rock, Maine. So, but, uh, I, I appreciate everything about it, and I also appreciate the ending of the body. I've always thought it's one of King's best endings for the uh, for the reality of the situation. I, I I think it's one of one of the best endings he's ever written, and I would I put it in this top five. I think I've done the top five worst Stephen King endings. So if you want to see the best Stephen King endings, let me know down there in the doobly doo. Uh, next up, we're still here. Uh, next up, I'm going with and. This might bring some drama, but The Breathing Method. Um, the Breathing Method is one of my favorite novellas, and yes, I like it more than uh, Shawshank Redemption. I like it more than, uh, what's the app, Pupil. I like, it, I like it more than both of those. I think The Breathing Method is one of those weird oddities. Again, I like the odd stuff. It's one of those odd stories that I, I had no idea what was coming the first time I read it. And for the first time, I'm, I'm you know, stumbling through it. I'm like, this isn't very good. I get to the end and I'm just like, whoa, and the, the reason why this book is on this list, this novella is on this in my top five is because for all time I have been stuck, ever since I first read this story and even countless rereads, 
Every time I think of this story, I have a very clear image of the last couple scenes of, this, of that novella. And even more so than anything else that I've ever read with Stephen King. In fact, if, if I did a top five scenes, like as far as uh, scenes that have stuck with me, my entire, not just disturbing, just scenes that have stuck with me visually, that would be very close to the top because every time I think about Stephen King, I think about that. That's one of those things, one of those scenes that made me even more of a fan, even though I was well into my fandom by this, by the time I had read this story. Um, but it's one of those scenes that really stuck with me. It's very, very visceral, and he he describes it so perfectly. It's like in Joe Hill. Some of it, you probably know what I'm talking about in Joe Hill's 20th Century. No, Joe Hill's Heart Shaped Box. The hallway scene with the chair, amazing. It's written so simplistic, so simply, but it's amazing. So, last but certainly not least, we are going with, wait, e, this is a short story collection. Yes, The Mist, which is the opening novella in this short story collection. Uh, the Mist is one of my favorites. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't number these. It's so hard to number them because I, I don't think Stephen King has ever written a bad novella. <coughs> elevation. Um, I don't think Stephen King has ever written a bad novella. Um, I, I don't. Uh, <laughs> but he's written some bad short stories, he's written some bad novels, but all of his novellas are usually on point. Um, and we're not going to discuss the one that we've been discussing. I'm trying not to, even with the cough joke. But um, it, there's something about when he, when he just focuses on a small section of story, um, he, he's, he's perfect. I, I, I can't think, if you can think of one novella that you didn't like, that you didn't at least like, that you hated, that you couldn't get through, I would really love to hear from you down there in the comments below. In fact, I want to do a top five worst Stephen King novellas, but I don't know what I would put on that list. So maybe I do, maybe next time I do a fan, uh, a fan version of the show, and I a comment. A comment version. Comment edition. Commenter edition. That's the, those are the words I was looking for. A commenter's edition of uh, Top 5 Friday. And I just list the ones that you guys don't like. So please, if you don't like a certain Stephen King novella, leave your comments down there in the doobly-doo. But until next time, I have been E. You have been you. This has been another Top 5 Friday. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.